G'day guys, I'm talking to you today about water distillation systems. Now in our harsh Australian bush particularly, surface water is very, very, very rare. The ironic part of that whole deal is we have a massive coastline. And in that coastline, you've got millions and millions of gallons of water, not a drop to drink. Can't drink salt water, can't drink really, really putrid water, can't drink a lot of heavily contaminated water. But what we can do to make it safer to drink is distill it. So how do you set up a water distillation system in the bush? I'm going to show you how to do that right now with a 2 litre stainless steel water bottle. This one's made by Clean Canteen. And we're going to set up a distillation system with stuff that you're either going to have with you or that you're going to be able to find in a lot of locations or at least understand the principles of what to do to improvise. Okay, let's get on and I'll show you the basic components for it now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is our water container. Now, a one litre water, water, water bottle, stainless steel, no paint, no lining, will do the same job. Okay, so it's another great reason to carry one of these things. This is a two litre one, made by Clean, Heat, uh, Clean Canteen, as I said, and it's a great size for what we're going to do. So, but if you've only got a one litre water bottle, that's fine. Right, first, first item. Second item is you need a plastic bag. Now these are the transpiration bags we, we use here at Bush Law Australia. Um, we'll so, show you how that comes into the equation shortly. Now the third and one of the most crucial parts for that whole equation is a piece of bamboo. Now, bamboo, PVC tubing, tubing cannibalized from the unders, underside of your, of your engine space and a broken down vehicle. The principles all remain the same. You need a piece of tubing to allow steam to be trapped and tapped out of the water bottle to move along the tubing far enough to start to cool and condense back into water and then to be captured in a vessel, in this case a plastic bag at the other end. This bit that looks like a cork is literally a cork. It's not mandatory. I'll explain that when we go through it. It's basically the tube that we're focusing on. All right. Now bamboo, oddly enough, is very prevalent in the Australian bush and in a lot of places where you can't normally uh, get good drinking water, there might be bamboo growing nearby. Now bamboo, green bamboo is best because it's softer when you're working the partitions out. The partitions are these joint sections here. Now I just knocked these out with a fire hardened stick of suitable diameter and just jamming them down there, ramming them through and blowing them out. Simple as that. Now I've got about two foot here, two and a half foot thereabouts. That's about a good length for what we're going to do. Okay, so I'll move over now to the fire. We'll set this thing up and I'll show you step, step by step what we're doing. So tube is the basis of it. We take our boiling vessel, remove the plastic lid, and I've just bound a bit of electrical tape that I always carry in my gear around the, the end of this tube, I've cut this piece of, I've selected this piece of bamboo and cut it so that it fits fairly closely and fairly snugly into the mouth of that wide mouth bottle. Right, now that would be full of my salt water, seawater, brackish water or otherwise contaminated water. Now I need to get this seal as tight as I can but I don't want to be binding tape on it because as this bottle heats up it's going to melt. Now we'll see how this bit of tape goes we may be replacing that shortly with a piece of cloth. That works equally as well and it doesn't melt as much. All right, so we're going to keep the base of the, of the bottle in the fire. The tube's going to allow the steam to come up as, as this starts to boil. And we're going to pipe it into a plastic bag at this end. Now this can be set up with the title with a piece of cordage. I've got a rubber band handy, I think, somewhere here. Bingo. You don't need to put any air in the bag at the start. You just need to have a good seal on the bag. So scrunch the bag up. And I use particular bags. These are food grade transpiration bags that I get in from a bag producer in Australia specifically. But any bag will do the job. The bigger the volume, the more you will yield without having to reset and muck around with the system. Every time you've got the system pulled apart, 
you're losing time, you're losing vapour, you're losing heat from the fire, and so forth and so forth. So that's our, our three component systems put together. Bottle, bottle, pipe, bag. That then gets positioned onto the fire so that we can actually get the system up and rolled. Let me cut away to the fire and we'll get that up and show you what that looks like. The picture you can see the water bottle in the fire with the water stored in, inside boiling away. Steam's then starting to run up that pipe and at the other end there is the plastic bag that we discussed. I've replaced our band with a piece of paracord while we're setting up because it's actually just much more efficient and much more effective at doing that particular job. And I've got to change that out. That's going to help, help me make life easier for myself as well. Now the cork in the middle there, a student on the cor one of the courses I watched to come up with this idea. It's a brilliant idea and it just shows that no matter how much you know, how many times you've been doing this stuff, you still learn stuff all the time. What this clever guy had done was he'd set this system up actually on a sea coast up in East Timor and to expedite the process of refilling the water bottle at that end without disturbing the system he bought a hole like I've done there into the tube of bamboo and fashioned a plug to go into it so when we refill the bottle with salt water we're just basically putting it in through that hole there and then the system remains undisturbed as we said the more you disturb the system the less it yields so that's the plug there, it's just a simple small piece of stick carved up to fit into the hole we've carved in the, in the bamboo tube. It needs to be tight fitting, you don't want to lose air or steam out of that process either. The rest starting to pipe into the bag now. Now as the water starts to boil in the bottle, we'll start to get steam coming out the other end. As you can see now the bag's inflated with hot air and it's actually very soft, so when you're looking at setting these things up, you need to make sure there's nothing sharp around the area that will puncture that bag. One little hole, and you're losing a great deal of your water vapour out of your system. But we're collecting water here quite well. If I give the bag a shake, you can see how much water we've got in the bottom, and that's after just half an hour. So we've got probably about a half a cup already, and that will continue to yield for us as long as I have water in the boiling vessel and as long as the bag stays unhold and the system stays airtight. When I want to refill, as we said before, we add steam into this point. You can see the steam just coming out of that hole now. Very warm, very hot. So set your system up to make sure that this pipe is not going to be disturbed when you're adjusting the system in any way, shape or form. So there you go guys, that's it, a very simple system. One you should know, add it to your repertoire, take those pieces of equipment out with you, look around all the time for the environment that you find yourself in, for things that will replicate that piece of tubing in the middle. That's the hardest part of this thing to replicate. If you've got the bottle, you've got a plastic bag, all you need is the tubing. Bamboo in this case, but there's a lot of other things out there including just hollow logs that you can probably rig up a system to work in the same or similar fashion. Stay safe out there, keep getting outdoors, enjoy yourself, take what's useful, discard the rest, and we'll see you next time. See ya.